day to be making another video. Um, there's a lot of things going on outside. Anyway, hi, I'm Hannah, and um, today I'm going to do all sorts of mushroomy things. Am I? Who knows really what I'm doing today? But yeah, I'm sipping some mushroom tea, which is a great start to this beautiful day. Um, this is a turkey tail, large needle, and elderberry tea. Um, and this has been printed in a little ebook by um, Herbal Academy, and it's also on my Patreon. Um, so if you want to see this recipe, there's a link in the description, and you can download the ebook if you want to. Um, cool. So, I thought I'd make another little foraging vlog, but this time also process the things a bit more because, yeah, some of you were like, show us what you do with the things that you pick. So, um, I was listening to this really nice podcast. It's the Mushroom, Mushroom Hour podcast, I think. Um, and there was an interview with, oh my god, I forgot the name, but I think they're like sort of like Instagram there was hips and whores and they were talking about birch polypore and elderberry syrup and I've got elderberries in the freezer and I've got this beautiful birch polypore that a friend gave to me um, yesterday it's so fresh it smells amazing if you saw my previous video you saw me process one of these um, they're just very abundant right now and if you have any birch trees around they're just around really it, is, it can be quite parasitic and usually you'll find them on dead birch trees just like eating their way through but um, these are very very good mushrooms they're like antiviral you know anti-bacterial and all sorts of things antiseptic <laughs> and just keep going with the anti but um, basically it's quite a good mushroom um, for your immune system in general and I want to try what they were talking about in the podcast, uh, which was, yeah, basically combining this with elderberries and making some sort of uh, yummy, syrupy goodness. And I hope it works out. So yeah, I'm gonna finish this tea and then I'll do that. And I hope you enjoy this video. And who knows what else will happen. Might make some rowan jelly, already made a batch, but I definitely need more to last me the year. Like last year I made rowan jelly and it just wasn't enough and I just, I'm really in love with rowan jelly. Very high in vitamin C and it just tastes so good. A lot of people don't like it but I love it. On toast, it's just so good, it's quite something. Mm. Hello, hello. I'm about to slice up this um, beautiful birch polypore. Ooh, look at this sweet little one. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, I'm gonna stop wowing, but this is a really wow moment. Wow, oh, it looks so good. It kind of looks like, like a cheese or something, I don't know. Um, it smells very, hmm, foresty, very foresty. Um, I don't know if I should leave all of this on, but I think, I'm just gonna start boiling then, maybe. Hmm. Maybe I'd cut a little bit of this part off because it has the woody bits on it. <laughs> you know, my thought processes just aren't that linear. They are very scatterdy scatterdy do scatterdy oh do 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 i washed some towels today i am proud because i don't really know how to wash things in washing machines they are kind of loud and terrifying the noises they make are just awful nobody likes the sound of washing machines i assume i'd like to think so but then again if you do don't feel you know don't feel bad about it okay so i've got i've got the birch polypore in here I'm just going to simmer that for a while. Um. I guess in terms of sources for some recipes, I use this book quite a lot. Um, I'm going to be making an elderberry syrup. 
It says here, put ripe elderberries into a large saucepan with half the volume of water, simmer and stir for 20 minutes. Allow to cool, then squeeze out the juice using a jelly bag or fruit press. Measure the juice. Measure the juice. Measure the juice. And for every 500 milliliters of juice, add 250 grams of sugar and a stick of cinnamon, a few cloves, slices of lemon. Simmer for 20 minutes, strain, pour while well, hot into sterilized bottles. Blah, 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 blah. Basically, I'm gonna kinda do something like this, but you know, I think there's always a lot of room for improvisation. Okay, these are the frozen um, berries that I'm also going to include in here. So as I'm doing it, this, as I'm doing this, the birch polypore is just like kind of bubbling on the stove in some water and it really doesn't smell very good. Um, so in the podcast that I was listening to, um, they kind of said to, yeah, just bubble it for a few hours or something and like constantly keep changing the water. So I'll just get rid of the water after a few minutes or whatever. And then I'll add some new water and keep doing that until it doesn't taste like super bitter anymore. I think it's more of a taste thing than anything, but I'm I'm not ac actually that sure, you know. I'm just trying things out because it's really fun. Um, either way, wow, these look amazing. Whoa, look at that. Mm. Okay, so I think this will be enough for now. Wow. Um, and then I'm just trying to try and take out all those sort of like planty bits as much as I can. And it's going to be strained anyway, it doesn't really matter that much, except for I think that the plant parts of this tree aren't necessarily that good for you. Um, or like they're said to be like slightly poisonous or something. But then again, you know, many things are. Many things are poisonous. We eat them anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll put these things back in the freezer for another good day to come. Some other things I'm getting involved in the syrup are some of these cardamom pods. Um, I might use this. Da -da 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 -da. So, using some cardamom pods and cloves and I've got cinnamon powder as well that's going in directly and some lime mm, smells really good Lots of cinnamon. So, I hope you can see me. Um, basically, this is now simmering happily. Oh, it smells really good. Oh, it's also really warm. It's um, birch polypore with the elderberries and cloves, cinnamon, also put in cardamom pods and some lime. And um, I'm just going to leave this on the heat, not boiling, just kind of bubbling a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to strain it and then add sugar and dissolve the sugar. And um, is it dissolve or dissolve? Dissolve. I don't know. But anyway, so, and then it'll hopefully be a syrup, you know, um, with some mushroom and some elderberry, and hopefully it'll be great. Oh my god, I forgot the ginger! Oh dear, you know, I'm like, all like, yeah, but this is crucial. So I'm gonna just cut this up and add it to this pot. <laughs>
so um, I'm going to show you how to make cordage using this is daffodil. It's quite old. I collected it maybe summer, late summer, um, and just dried it. And now I made it a little bit moist by making this towel wet and kind of squishing it. Um, and I'm going to be making cordage with it. So basically, the way you start out is um, the way you start out is by taking a few strands. It depends how thick you want it. You can use a lot of strands or just a few. I'm using three for now. And I'm making sure they don't all align at the same time. So they're all kind of like spaced out a bit differently. Um, and then somewhere in the middle, doesn't really matter where, I twist one towards me and one away from me until it naturally makes a little loop. Whoop! Little loop like that. And then I keep doing the exact motion but I pick up the loop and as I keep twisting them both in the direction that I started twisting them in I also twist them in the opposite direction um, like that now you've got the beginning of your cordage I'll do it again one towards you, one away from you until it creates a little loop and you keep twisting it while also putting it over the opposite side until you start to develop something like this and there's lots of different techniques to do it just kind of see what your hands naturally want to be doing um, this is how I make it but you know there's many a way to do this um, you're just going to keep doing this until it gets a bit thinner and you need to put in another strand and basically I'll just keep doing this first Okay, so one of these strands is kind of running out a bit, but it still feels quite thick, so I'm just waiting until I put a new one in. Maybe now it feels a bit thinner, so I'm going to add an extra strand. So I've got one strand here, I'm just going to place it somewhere here, not in the middle, just somewhere around. Oops, maybe this is a good one. I'm going to make it a bit longer on this side. Okay, so I put it on and I'm just going to twist it in as if it was always part of it and it will kind of naturally find its way. And then if you do it right, you shouldn't really see where you put them in. Look, I put it in there. You can see it's a little bit thicker, but overall it's not that visible. It's got a little bit of a twist in there, but you know, it just gets a bit thicker here. But overall, you know, with practice, you get better at it, and then you can add them in easily. And you just really keep doing this forever and ever until you get tired of doing this sort of thing. Yeah. And it will just have little bits come off it that you can just snip off once you're done and you can just make a big piece of cordage like this. of making this rowan jelly, finishing this rowan jelly. Um, I have been doing this over a few days because it just takes a really long time, um, especially the dripping part, because if you don't want it to be cloudy, which is okay, you know, it's, I think it's kind of an aesthetic thing, but also it tastes a little less strong if you um, make it more clear. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's just been literally like a week or something. Um, I am, wow, it smells real good. 
I'm now currently bringing it to a boil to um, basically then pour it into a bunch of jars and um, hopefully it will set properly because I had to re I have to redo this because I did not use enough sugar. Like Rowan Rowan is like really strong, like the berries are really strong tasting and um, I think it's quite easy to use too little sugar because it's like, oh, should I really be using this much sugar? And I swear like with all the quantities online, like some of them will just not have enough sugar basically. So always put in more than you think with Rowan jelly in particular. Um, it smells really good now, it smells kind of caramelly. So I hope it will be beautiful and tasty. Um, and yeah, maybe you'll make some, you know, let me know if you do. Let me know if it's beautiful and tasty because Rowan jelly is really tasty. And it's like super high in vitamin C. It just goes really well, like with savory things I find. It's like not really something that I would have on its own on toast. I would have it with something else like kale, um, for example, and it tastes, it's just amazing. So highly recommend it because Rome berries are often in like abundance and they often also grow close to crab apple trees. But if you're not into the taste of this, then just make some apple jelly, you know, with some crab apples. Um, but yeah, I'll show you how it goes. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Okay, definitely make sure that you sterilize these jars real well and then you let them drip out. Um, because you don't want it to mould. Um, I just usually put a lot of boiling water in and then let them dry out. And then I will pour the jelly in here. film like an outro-y thingy um, because I'm gonna just end the video here and um, yeah I hope you enjoyed it it's a bit different to what I usually do I guess so let me know what you want more of less of you know what you enjoy what you enjoy less so um, I hope you enjoyed all these little makings um, I've been having the syrup that I made it tastes really nice um, and I just have a little spoon of it every day. It's good um, preventative for like flus or just, um, you know, viruses in general um, and infections. Um, and I've been, I've been all right. So, so far I hope it's working. <laughs> and uh, yeah, elderberry syrup in general, you know, is quite good. Um, um, and then in terms of the jelly, so it's tasting a bit strong <laughs> and mainly because I've got to freeze the berries before I use them. It's usually recommended that you pick the berries after the first frost, but the berries are like kind of already going over now, and I'm not sure why, but um, basically we pick them um, before the frost, you know, and then you usually can put them in the fridge, or, sorry, in the freezer, and then you kind of like fake a frost basically, but um, didn't do that, so please do do that if you're going to make rowan jelly, just pop them in the freezer overnight and then you can use them and the taste will be much sweeter um yeah other than that i haven't used the sea buckthorn just yet i'm going to try and make some tea with it there are plenty of foraging recipes all sorts of things online but i will put some stuff in the description um i usually just look things up in books or uh, research stuff like online basically and sometimes i just make things up as well you know just see what happens um, so yeah if you have any questions let me know um next video is gonna have some very fun mushroom foraging in it um because i found all sorts of really cool mushrooms and i hope you come and see it so subscribe and like join me or something i don't know i'm a really bad youtuber i think anyway this is fun though take care guys